Okay, so it's that time of the week, you two, where I'm just about going through uh, this week's uh, biggest fights, if you like. I mean, sometimes I do try and do predictions on uh, some of the fights that not necessarily the casual boxing fans will be watching either. Um, but there's one that intrigues me, and I think it takes place on Friday rather than Saturday, uh, which is a bit un- uh, unusual. Um, but it's a, it's a fight between the current IBF Super Flyweight Champion, uh, Zamali Tete, and England's very own Paul Butler. Now, when you look at these two guys... Records about looking at you know, who they fought, or you know, just looking at simply age, you know, recording fights themselves. You know, you look at Paul Butler, he's only 26, 17 and 0, only 8 KOs, not the hardest hit with fighters. You look at Tete, also 26, uh, in total 22 fights, 19 um, wins with 16 inside the distance, and three defeats, including one defeat by way of knockout. So, on the basis of it, you know, obviously Tete is a defeated fighter. He has lost previously. Um, but they're quite similar records and they're quite similar age ranges. Although, I think the one thing that does stand out quite obvious is the fact that Tete is the harder hitting fighter out of the two. Now, when you do start to look at the guy's records uh, a little bit more, and I will get into your styles uh, very shortly, I just want to look into records first and foremost. I think it's always something interesting to look at with regarding uh, an up and fight as to where the fight has been, what he's been doing. And I always like to look at the last five fights. Now, in terms of Paul Butler, there's not a lot to say about his last five fights, really, because if I did start listing off names of opponents, um, if there's anyone watching this video that doesn't really watch like domestic boxing on the British level, or, or if you're not British, of course, then you're not really going to have heard of any name on his record, barring one, uh, which is of course Stewie Hall, who uh, Randy Carbello beat um, through the uh, Bantamweight title uh, late last year. Uh, was it last year? It must have been late last year. Yeah, anyway. Um, so, yeah, the, the only win, or the only decent win of any, I wouldn't even call it a world level, with no disrespect to Stewie Hall, um, but P- Paul Butler's biggest win is over Stewie Hall. Now, Stewie Hall is a very limited fighter. Plenty of heart, plenty of grit, um, but he's limited. You know, he's he's not the kind of guy that's going to give you a world level test. Um, he's the kind of guy that could give you probably give you a good European test. You know, I was actually quite surprised he he was ever given the title shot in the first place. In fair place when he took it and won the title. Um, but you know, like guys, it, it kind of winds me up sometimes in the way of boxing. You know, how some people get title shots. Uh, Stewie Hall, whether you agree with him or not, Stewie Hall's title shot uh, was kind of bullcrap from the start of the stunk. But fair play to him, like I say, he won a very tough fight to win that title. Um, you know, and it was his to defend uh, against Paul Butler in that fight. Now, I, I watched that fight in life. Um, the, the judges gave a split decision to Paul Butler. Yeah. I, I personally feel Paul yeah. Butler was a, probably deserved a unanimous decision. Uh, it was close towards the end of the fight. You know, it wasn't... In the earlier rounds, it was kind of Paul Butler's speed and technical skill that was taking and showing the way. The kind of Stewie Hall coming back later on with a bit of heart and a bit of grit. You know, and it was kind of one of those fights. Which which way do you like? Which way do you see it? For me, I just think Paul Butler was too skillful and too classy for Stewie Hall. Uh, I actually had that fight with uh, Paul Butler winning. Uh, if I remember rightly, you know, you know, it's all in the middle of last year, but I think I had it. Uh, 116 to 112 or 116 to 113, someone, something like that. You know, I didn't have it like close, close. Uh, but I had it. I had Paul Butler as a clear winner. Um, now, I mean, so you know, so Paul Butler is a world champion, of course. You know, that was um, a bantam weight. You know, of course, he's now taking a step back down to his more natural super fly to take his fight against Tete. Uh, and obviously, with him being previously the champion of bantam weight, I think that's probably the reason. Oh, excuse me. Uh, why he's uh, got this title shot so fast at Teddy, which was of course meant to take place uh, late last year, um, but unfortunately I think it was Teddy who had to pull out of injury. Now, if you look at Teddy's record, on the other hand, again, you know you might not know know really the names on there. You know, there's there's a couple of names on there. You're like, what the fuck who are they? You know, we don't disrespect them, of course, but that. That's the way it is. You know, boxing is not like football. There's loads of boxers worldwide in every country. It's not. It's not as easy to keep up. Um, but let's just let's just look at the last five fights for Tete, for example, right? 
Yeah, right. He's of course a South African native. His last five points, two of them fought in South Africa. He won the vacant title in Japan. He won a tough eliminator against former world champion Juan Carlos Sanchez Jr. in Mexico by a knockout as well. Sorry, excuse me. Uh, and he also fought and lost a fight in Argentina. Now, before that, he never really travelled. So, you know, that looks pretty cool when you look at that and you think, oh, wow, you know, the guy's travelling a bit. But before those five, you know, before kind of the Argentina fight, as it were, he hadn't really travelled out of his comfort zone a lot. A lot of his fights were in South Africa. Um, but when, you, when I look at a guy like that who's gone abroad, you know, I mean, Sanchez Jr., for example, he was never really a fantastic champion, but he was a world champion on and off, a bit dodgy, right? So to score a win over him in Mexico, and it was a dirty fight as well, but to score a win over him in Mexico and knock him out in the 10th round, you know, that, that shows a lot of uh, a lot of grit, you know, a lot of, uh, a lot of heart, heart on the sleeve, you know, did, didn't let the crowd phase him, went to Mexico, wouldn't fight, you know, went to Japan, fought for the vacant world title against the former Japanese super flyweight title holder, um, quite pretty formality really the uh, the Japanese fighter that he fought he'd only got, got like two knockouts on his record or something ridiculous he was never going to back Tete up or cause him any pressure uh, and Tete got a deserving win um, so the thing about Tete is what I'm trying to say is this guy's a dangerous opponent he's a champion for a reason I, mean, I know you can look at his record and say oh he's lost three times but you know, one of those was in Argentina on the on scorecards and a couple of them was when he was you know in, in kind of the earlier days of his career if you like um, now Paul Butler I have no doubt has the speed and has I think the technical uh, skill advantage I do I think he's got the bare hands uh, I think I think Paul Butler throws some fantastic combination punches behind his jab he can really throw some great combinations the only problem is he's Paul Butler doesn't hit very hard so he is like a, he's a hit and move boxer you know get in the pocket throw the combos get out of the pocket uh, that's what he did against Stu Hall for the majority of the fight of their fight. Um, so that's what I can see Paul Butler doing on Friday night. I don't think he's going to want to stay in the pocket with this guy. You know, Tete, you know, like I say, he's a hard-hitting fighter. And it does come with a bit of a reputation. So I don't think Paul Butler's going to want to stay in the pocket. I don't think he's going to, you know, going to want to trade. Um, Prediction-wise, I can just, I don't know why. I've got a strange feeling about this one. I've just got a strange feeling Tete is just going to show up and do the business. I don't, I don't know why, because I've got nothing against Paul Butler in the world. I think he's a fantastic little fighter. It's just a shame he hasn't got more power, like I say. Um, but I just got, I just got a strange feeling that this fight on Friday is going to go down pretty much like this. Paul Butler's going to come out. He's going to get behind his jab, use his move with early doors, and I think Paul Butler's going to look fantastic for about five or six rounds. I really do. Um, but then in the middle of rounds, later rounds. What happened at the Stewie Hall fight where Stewie Hall started to dig in, dig his heels in, you know, show his heart and grit and started getting through Butler's defences when he was getting tired and started laying it on Butler a little bit. Well, this is what I can kind of see happening here. I can kind of see Butler, like I say, starting really well, looking class, getting that lead on the scorecards, but then Tete just hanging in there. You know, Tete is a bit of a dirty fighter. I can see him using some dirty little tricks, you know, kind of uh, through the... Uh, earlier mid rounds and I, I can see Tete coming on strong and late on this fight and I think Paul, uh, Paul Butler's really got to be aware of that because if he's not then I, I, can, I, I can just see this I can just see this finishing in knockout for Tete I would, I would kind of say my prediction as it stands is knockout Tete victory between rounds 9 and 12 that's that you know I don't want to give that prediction <laughs> you know I'd, I'd love obviously Paul Butler to become a two way world champion um, but I just I don't know, strange feeling, you know. I don't know, I don't know how to say it other than it's just a good feeling. Um, if if it doesn't happen, if it's going to go to points, then certainly Paul Butler's got the advantage in terms of movement, speed, uh, and combination. You know, I think Paul Butler is definitely the better boxer out of the two, but Tete is dangerous. So anyway, I don't want to, I don't want to blab on too much more about this one. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Uh, please subscribe.